Why does it require four police officers to investigate this event seems disproportionate. Well, it's child so I would say that's a very serious offense that needs to be investigated. Right. Also, can we maybe drop the snarky remarks when talking about such a serious offense? We put doctors at such a high level that we are now blind when we hear Dr. whatever, Dr. Grande, Dr. Todd, Dr. The orange, it doesn't matter what the doctor is, but you hear that doctor and immediately you are shutting down pretty much all of your critical thinking. Smart people aren't dumb. Shit. And at the end of the day, fill the room with the juice. So that's a lot of loot. Uh, that bit fire. Uh, yeah, she kind of cute. Welcome back to my channel. Let's get in it. So, Dr. Todd Grande, I obviously, if you're not new here, then you know, have been doing reaction videos with Dr. Grande for quite some time. I have not watched his content since the last time I've uploaded him on my channel. Basically, my premise is I don't watch the content, I react to the content. Therefore, if I'm not uploading on this channel, then I don't watch said content until I start uploading to the channel. Obviously, to keep things as fresh as possible. So, when I came across this, I unsubscribed from Dr. Grande months ago, and now you get why. I was like, okay, first of all, Anna, psychology, whoa, 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 like, girl, let us know, let us know what's going on, because if you don't know, I did double minor in psychology. However, by no means am I somebody who considers myself an expert at all. Nope, never have been, and that is why we watch Dr grande content on here and other people's content that is educational at some point or another that is something i want to keep innate in my content is some sort of educational standpoint with that being said i have no idea if this video is going to like stir me into the direction of hating dr grande but at the same time i am extremely curious to know what she has to say i mean the views are looking pretty great almost 160k views and this came out january 31st 2021 Let's hop in this. Uh, let's see what she got to say. And it's 333. Yikes. Hey guys, if you don't know me, my name is Anna. I'm Whoa. a clinical psychology doctoral candidate. She looks like my friend. Applications to psychology, so hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Today Whoa. we're talking about what the title is, which um, is not a video I thought I would ever make, but oh, okay. given his recent video on Claudia Conway, I decided I would like to speak up about Todd Grande's style. Please don't send hate his way or be hateful in my comments either. This is not a call for his cancellation. I'm not telling you that you need to unsubscribe to. I'm just sharing my concerns about his professional conduct as a fellow mental health professional. So I know I said that I okay, was taking a step back from social commentary videos because I was becoming increasingly concerned with how commentary videos profit off of tearing other people down. True. And when I have made recent commentaries myself, I've been kind of dropping hints that I don't like the way some people, particularly mental health professionals, have been mocking the people that they talk about. Mm. What I didn't tell you was that the primary reason I was stepping back from commentary videos was actually because I had noticed this with Dr. Todd Grande's videos and it did not sit well with me. Mm. I actually unsubscribed from him a few months ago because I was noticing more and more things that did not seem right. And you know, I was going back and forth trying to decide whether or not to make this video and I'm kind of ashamed to say it, but the reason I didn't want to post this video was because I worried he would then make a video mocking me like he does with about people. Oh, and wow. he has a lot more subscribers than me and I'm not really at a place Ooh. where I can handle the mental effort of dealing with that right Girl. now. But then I decided, you know it's what, that. if I am fearful that a mental health professional is going to publicly mock me, a young woman who is getting her doctorate in clinical right. psychology, then how can I be silent about this? I have to right. stand up for all the people he has mocked, most recently Claudia Conway, the underage teenage daughter of Kellyanne Conway, who has publicized her mother's alleged abuse online, and who has been the victim of having her intimate photo leaked online, which we will get to in a bit. Anyway, for a bit of backstory, if you don't know who I'm, who I'm talking about, yeah, Todd Grande is a counselor no, and YouTuber who makes primarily yeah. social commentary videos about trending people at the time. I found his channel around the same time that I made my own, and for a time I really enjoyed it and found a lot of similarity between his perspective and mine. Actually, our perspectives were so similar at one point that when I made a video about Will and Jada Smith, 
Tom Grandy came out with a very similar one the next day. And to be clear, it never even crossed my mind that he had based his video off of mine. I just assumed we had agreed on the topic and I still to this day think that. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I had quite a disheartening comment on my video about that. So it was on the video that I made about the Smiths and it was a woman actually and her comment was, you're just parroting what Dr. Grande said and put on some clothes you look indecent. For a little bit of context, I was about to go to the supermarket in midsummer, and I had decided at the last minute to film a video about the Smiths because it was time sensitive. And this is what I was wearing, a tank top. I wasn't even wearing makeup. My only intention in that moment was to do what I had set out to do, right. which was to film the video and then go to the supermarket. Girl. But that woman's comment revealed an awful truth about the society we live in, that a young woman sharing her thoughts is an incompetent Jezebel, while an older man sharing the exact same thoughts but a day later is a beacon of truth. And don't get me wrong, that woman's comment was not the reason why I unsubscribed from Todd Grande. Of course, I do not blame him for his followers' hate. But it did start to get me thinking about the fact that he doesn't really acknowledge his differentials in power and privilege in any of his videos. And the more I watched That's him, true. the more this became clear to me. So one concern that I had when this was just like starting to bud, he seems to pride himself on objectivity, even stating in a video that he thinks emotionality is the opposite of objectivity and never a good idea. This to me kind of signals the complete discreditation of subjective knowledge and it was a major red flag. Mm. Of course, we should all aim to minimize our biases as much as possible. But to completely throw anecdotal and qualitative evidence under the bus is ignorant. And to ignore the impact of emotions is to quite often side with the oppressor. Watch my video on political gaslighting if Freeze. this doesn't quite make sense to you where <laughs> okay. I describe it in more depth. Mm. In DBT, which you may know I have a whole series on dialectical behavioral therapy, the wise mind is not 100% objective or 100% emotional. Mm. It is a balance of the two. We need both in order to be wise in our thinking. But the irony is, in placing himself as the defender of objectivity, Dr. Grande has also become blind to his own biases. Again, the Claudia Conway situation that we'll get to in a moment. Another red flag that I noticed, Dr. Grande made a video in which he speculated whether the mistress of Chris Watts, who, if you don't know who that is, he was the man who murdered his pregnant wife and two children. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Grande was speculating if that guy's mistress manipulated him into killing his family because she was out of his league. And to be clear, his mistress had to start a new life for her own protection and she was not found to be involved. The implication here is that a woman is inherently manipulative simply by existing as an object of attraction. Girl! And that men are powerless in the face of their violent urges. Pause. Girl, why did so, he say that? Out of his league, really? They both seem to right. They look real basic. Another red flag, and this is something that was really, really chronic Girl. with every single video Let the constant know. mocking and taking jabs at people that he was talking about. Like with Trisha Paytas, he said, She really does give new meaning to the phrase, I'm at a loss for words. It's a lot like driving by <laughs> an accident and staring at it. If you took the concept of a temper tantrum and transformed it into a YouTube channel about Tati West. Westbrook, he said, finally the video mercifully comes to an end. About Jenna Marbles, he said, she has billions of followers, that's funny. billions with a B as in baffling. Thought Chris McCandless. Wait, pause, pause. Girl, I can't have you just continue. I'm sorry. Like, look. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna come real or I'm not gonna come at all, okay? And, and look, look, she's absolutely correct about that. But, but something that I just actually found out like a couple days ago. Okay, I had to cut out that rambling. There was a video that I saw on YouTube, couldn't find the video. So here's an article that covers it as well. One unusual sign, your IQ is higher than average science finds. The people with the highest IQs had the highest comprehension and appreciation for dark cartoons, AKA dark humor, obviously. They were also more educated. Humor processing is a complex information processing task. The studies, authors wrote in the scientific journal cognitive processing the researchers concluded that this study could point to stronger activity in brain areas involved in humor processing to fully wrap one's head around the punchline of dark jokes requires high level cognitive brain power and emotional processing the researchers said but 
it is a red flag, but it is also an advantage that I'm sure Dr. Todd sees and uses to gain ad revenue. I mean, at the end of the day, those are the things that we should be at a point collectively to look at, right? When you go to a YouTube page or you go to a YouTube channel or you decide to look at someone's YouTube, you should be able to distinguish right now if I am a real YouTuber or if I'm a fake YouTuber or you, uh, basically we all innately do that now. We are all looking for the uniqueness, the authenticity within the person that we're looking at through the screen, correct? Correct, I think we're all there, we're all there, right? Okay, good. So in turn, I think that's probably why he does it. I mean, at the end of the day, is it by any means like, bad of course but that's subjective you know what i mean it, it, i think it all depends on perspective no cannot defend himself he said he wasn't diagnosing him and yet he called him narcissistic and i want to make it known that i'm not a big fan really of these people i actually kind of agree that a lot of these youtubers can be harmful for viewers but the idea of a mental health professional making fun of another human being like this makes me really uncomfortable yes. i always think of it in terms of how would a client feel if they saw my channel if I were his therapy client and I saw his video in which he was joking about losing brain cells from watching a YouTuber, I would feel very uncomfortable because it would be clear to me that this is not a person who treats others with basic respect, okay. and compassion, who gives people the benefit of the- Valid, valid point. And the only reason that I can even speak on this part is because I dated a therapist. And one thing that was immediately spoken about within like the first date was that I could not share his face on like YouTube or Instagram or 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 Snapchat or just anything in general because he cared more about the perception of how his clients would perceive him if they were able to see his personal life. And I'm not gonna lie, gained a lot of respect for therapists during that time of me dating that person. This is not someone who operates from a strengths-based approach, as we call it. And I wouldn't really feel comfortable going to a therapist who makes this types of public statements. I would wonder, what has this person thought or said about me when I've shared intimate details of my life in therapy? Another red flag was Todd Grundy's refusal to comment on the sociopolitical beliefs of Jordan Peterson. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Most of you already know I find Jordan Peterson's statements to be unsubstantiated and bigoted, and that is all I will say on the matter. But Dr. Grande maintained an objective stance on Jordan Peterson, specifically his philosophical and psychological statements, That's while crazy. conveniently ignoring the man's unsupported social and political beliefs. I think it's a privilege that he could afford to do so right. for a woman or a trans person or a gay person or someone of low socioeconomic status. When we hear some of the statements made by Jordan Peterson, I don't believe that women do have a tendency to prefer d bad men higher in dark triad traits. They may have a tendency to be more erotically uh, attracted to men who are capable of manifesting dominance and aggression. I think the evidence for that is relatively clear, and I don't think the Bible at all des describes a mode of being as associated with nice guy traits. That may be how it's classically taught, because Christ is often presented, especially in more simple-minded Vari variants and as the ultimate in nice guys, but I don't think that that's true at all. We simply cannot ignore them. They are hurtful. And while it's Dr. Grande's right to not want to discuss a polarizing topic, it would have been a great opportunity to stand up for those of us who are torn down if we tried to do so. And you may be wondering if this was just an informed calculation on Dr. Grande's part in order to avoid controversy. Well, for someone who seeks to avoid controversy, he sure has been making a lot of politically geared videos recently, such as analyses of the first and second presidential debates, Antifa, Proud Boys, the vice presidential debate, Trump's coronavirus diagnosis, Trump's diagnosis of speculated narcissism, Biden's diagnosis of speculated dementia, the QAnon shaman, and so on. So Bruh. it seems to me Dr. Grande's desire to stay away from polarizing topics extends only to topics that may benefit the oppressed to address. Plus, I just have a major concern about a mental health professional making such political videos and placing himself as the objective arbitrator and be-all, end-all source of judgment. Mm. It's clear from his comment section, too, that a lot of people go to his videos 
to hear a level-headed analysis uh, of highly nuanced topics. True. But no one yeah. is free of biases, and it seems highly irresponsible to posit yourself as the beacon of truth on political matters, mm -hmm. especially if your degree is in counseling and counseling supervision mm. rather than political science. Mm. Which brings me to my next point. Given his preoccupation with objectivity and his refusal to take a stance in the face of injustices, I began to do a bit of research on Dr. Grandi's qualifications because the behaviors I just listed, they're not really typical of someone with a degree in psychology. These graduate programs in psychology tend to place a very great emphasis on both emotion and diversity to the point where it's quite unusual for someone with a degree in psychology to consistently ignore these factors. So according to his LinkedIn, Todd Grande is a licensed counselor and he has a PhD in counselor education and supervision. Now, I say this with humility because I know very little about what this degree means, and I tried to do a little bit of research, but it didn't really answer my question. So if you know any additional information, please correct me, let me know. But to my knowledge, a degree in counselor education and supervision is not the same thing as a degree in clinical or forensic or school or organizational psychology or another field where the focus is on treating patients. Freak. It seems like a degree in counselor education and supervision is instead on training counselors who are master's level clinicians, which is probably why this doctorate is three years rather than five to six like most doctorate programs. But to be clear, Dr. Grande is still a counselor and he's still technically a doctor, a doctor who has correct. a PhD. Right. So he clearly can't call himself a counselor. Yeah. And it's my understanding that at least in many states, a psychologist is only someone who has completed a doctorate in the field of psychology. Mm -hmm. With this in mind, it does seem a little bit like Dr. Grande has been using his title as doctor on YouTube it, it, in the same way as a psychologist would. It, right. It seems like a pretty safe assumption that if you introduce your channel as mental health focused and call yourself a doctor, people will assume you're a psychologist. Preach. It kind of teeters on being a misrepresentation of one's qualifications. Absolutely. And this is why I state in every single video, I'm a clinical psychology doctoral candidate. And before I defended my dissertation proposal, I called myself a clinical psychology doctorate student. Mm. It's also why I've never stated that I'm a psychologist. I correct people right. whenever someone says that in a comment. I make it very clear that I'm a student and a therapist only under the supervision of a licensed psychologist so it doesn't really sit well with me that someone would be intentionally misleading their audience mm. and using that to position themselves as a source of objective truth. And mm. like I said, to be Preach. fair, I'm not saying he shouldn't call himself a doctor. You know. He clearly has a doctorate right. degree and also valuable clinical experience from his years as counselor. I'm bringing it up only as part of a pattern in which he ignores power differentials in the situations that he analyzes and uses his own power as an authority figure to make fun of the people he talks Girl, about. You are and not it makes wrong. sense that his degree is not in clinical psychology because yes. of these two things. Because at least in every clinical psychology training program I've heard of, these two things are not considered okay. It also kind of highlights the importance of people who are doctors disclosing what type of doctor. Yes. Yeah. Like, for example, there was this pharmacist a few years ago on YouTube who went by doctor and has been called out by actual registered dietitians for promoting unhealthy nutritionalist misinformation. Doctor could also mean that maybe you're a psychologist pretending to be a physician, or maybe a doctor could mean mm -hmm. you're an expert in education, yet you're making medical statements. Mm -hmm. To give him the benefit of the doubt, Dr. Grande does state in his channel intro video that this channel is focused on mental health topics and counselor supervision. Okay, However, so first of all, his channel has died. Here's the issue with that. At that point, it's it's, it becomes the public's fault. And let me let me explain why. We put doctors at such a high level that we are now blind when we hear Dr. whatever, Dr. Grande, Dr. Todd, Dr. Orange. It doesn't matter what the doctor is, but you hear that doctor and immediately you are shutting down pretty much all of your critical thinking because there is this person who is in this godly form who can change lives 
cut up brains like or again depends on where your brain goes when you think of a doctor right so this then brings in the conversation of us having the knowledge and critical thinking to break down what that means when someone says doctor because anyone can say that they're a doctor i can go and go get my phd and have it in like i don't know five ten years i don't know i'm lazy so i don't know how long it would take but let's just say i wanted to go get my phd i could get my phd and then right here i could be on my channel calling myself dr swirl Dr. Swirl. And then before you know it, new people coming in and they're like, oh my God, this is a black doctor with braids. I must listen to her. We must bow down. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. You know what I mean? Smart people aren't dumb. Shit. And at the end of the day, yeah, you know what the algorithm wants, you know what it needs, you know what you need to talk about to get the ad revenue. He knows that. Now, is he putting that above his status? and his morals and his pretty much character, reputation. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people do it for money, don't they? Quite considerably from those topics and none of his credentials give him the right to pass judgment on public figures. Now let's talk about a specific instance where he uses this position of authority to pass judgment on people. The example here being Claudia Conway, which I think is the most recent and horrendous example of this. If you don't know, Claudia Conway is the daughter of Kellyanne Conway, who used to work for Trump. And Claudia has been documenting what appears to be her mother's alleged abuse on TikTok. So first, Dr. Grande gives his usual Wikipedia summary of the situation for a number of minutes. Mm -hmm. Then the first kind of problematic thing he says is, why were four police officers called to the house after Kellyanne Conway's account? Again, we don't know if it was her that released this or if she was hacked, but her account had leaked the 15-year-old daughter's intimate photo. His actual statement was, I wonder if these police officers are reevaluating their career choice. Why does it require four police officers to investigate this event? Seems disproportionate. Well, it's child so I would say that's a very serious offense that needs to be investigated. Right. Also, can we maybe drop the snarky remarks when talking about such a serious offense? I wonder if these officers are reevaluating their career choice. Isn't even funny, especially in this context, though. So Dr. Grande offers his theory on the situation, which I'm not quite sure what makes him qualified to do so. As he himself said, we know very little about the situation. He also says, Claudia has certainly posted a lot of sensitive and insulting content about her parents. Yes. Claudia has publicized the alleged abuse that she has had to endure. It is sensitive content, but the way the statement is framed kind of makes me think of like people who say, don't air out your dirty laundry there when you referring go. to someone reaching out for help in an abusive situation. There you go. It's not really airing out dirty laundry. If it seems like a cry for attention, it's because abuse merits our attention. Mm. She also says Claudia doesn't seem to have a clear image of the political domain. She appears to be against her mother because her mother works for Trump. But Claudia also doesn't get along with her father, and he's just about as anti-Trump as a person could get. Do I really have to explain the concept that a teenager could have <laughs> relational difficulties right. with both of her parents while the parents are on completely opposite sides of the political spectrum? Right. And is it really necessary to belittle a teenage girl by saying she doesn't have a clear image of politics? I'm curious, what is that statement even based on? Right. Then he says, it's much How more we likely keep... we're not seeing a sophisticated debate about political topics as much as a 16-year-old girl who's perhaps rebelling against her parents and or responding to disagreements between family members. Again, with the belittling of Claudia because of her age and her gender, assuming that she's just a rebel and invalidating her. Since Dr. Grande is very Sounds like Dr. Phil. With the facts and nothing more, here are the facts of what we know, or at least what I know. And I honestly don't know the whole situation that's been publicized on. She has mocked her daughter and made light of her mental illness. She has been filmed throwing things at her, the caption, although that's not as much clear. An intimate photo was leaked of 15-year-old Claudia on her mother's account. Claudia has stated on camera that she's scared and that if she disappears from social media, it is not of her own accord. She shortly thereafter issues a statement saying she's leaving social media to focus on her family. Here's the thing. Dang, that's so scary. I would be so scared. I forgot. I haven't even seen her TikTok in forever either. Even if this doesn't sound severe enough to you or you don't think it's abuse, it is at the very it least a sounds like abuse to me. woman 
treating what? a not grown, not adult teenager in a very cruel way. This is not like two adults getting into an immature fight. When a parent intimidates a child or screams at them or throws things at them or insults them, there is the added component of a power imbalance. Then Dr. Grande gives his unsolicited tips on the situation. The first tip he has is, I think it would be a good idea not to take those types of photos in the first place. So oh, Claudia stated real? that those photos were for herself. And the last time I checked, women's bodies are not criminalized quite yet. Also, she's a minor. She's 15 years old in those photos. You don't blame a 15 year old for taking a photo. You blame the person who stole it with malicious and illegal intent. Saying this is kind of like saying to someone whose car was stolen from their garage, well, maybe you shouldn't have had a car in the first place. Mm. And here's the thing, obviously for her safety, it would be a good idea to get rid of any such photos so that she's not in further danger. Mm. But to say this to a victim and to say it the way he said it can strike real shame into them that they then internalize about their body. Yes. That there's something wrong about them or there's something inherently dirty about them. Well, and obviously. right after they've had a massive but, violation of privacy and been exposed to the world and all its predators, there is an immense risk of re-traumatizing them by saying something so invalidating. And it so misses the mark, which is that something very intimate was stolen from a child and shown mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. that a mental health professional doesn't understand this is mind-boggling mm. another one of his tips is not a good idea for everybody to yell at each other imagine for a second you're in an abusive or at the very least dysfunctional family and you go to the therapist's office and the therapist says well maybe you shouldn't yell at each other it's a very simplistic view that frankly erases the power differential mm. between an adult parent and a powerless teen mm. with nothing but her phone to document what's happening and his last tip is to restrict activity on social media again claudia's only way of reaching for help since we know cps and the police have already been involved multiple times and nothing has been done so then he asks what does research tell us about mother-daughter conflict and he talks about a specific study that says it's just a matter of daughters wanting more autonomy and parents wanting to slow it down. This becomes chronic. Both the mother and the daughter feel ashamed that they can't get along when society tells them they have a special relationship. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, I don't think that this study focused on abusive relationships mm -hmm. between mothers and daughters. And even if it were, we cannot apply one research finding to a specific instance which as Dr. Grande said, we know very little about and right. can only speculate. Right. Just because you put the disclaimer that we don't know for sure this is what's going on in this specific instance, that doesn't mean your audience isn't going to jump to that conclusion. You it's like if I it? said, I don't know if this apple is poisonous, and then started talking about a study saying apples are poisonous. Obviously, people's minds are going to jump to the conclusion that this apple is likely poisoned. About these sources that he uses too, some of them, like the one I just mentioned, are actual scientific research, but some of them are absolutely not. And he still talks about the topics as if the research he's done is based on empirical, peer-reviewed studies, mm -hmm. such as his video on OnlyFans in which he speculates what personality issues could be involved in both patrons and content producers, yet his only articles are two from the New York Times, one from Influencer Marketing Hub, and one from CNN. Nothing in those articles really suggests what the psychological personality profile could be involved with these people. Right. Anyway, this Claudia Conway situation has finally made me speak up about something I didn't think I would speak up about. Mm. I tried to just see it as a difference in comfort level, mm. i.e. he is more comfortable using his degree to pass judgment on people, but I crossed the line of victim blaming and belittling teenage abuse victims. Mm. Something else I want to mention, we, his past and current audience mm -hmm. need to hold ourselves accountable for this as well. I see a lot of comments on his videos egging him on saying, oh my god, you're so hilarious, Dr. Grande, what a sophisticated burn, whenever he makes jokes at the expense of the people he's talking about. Sure. We are enabling him and essentially giving him the message that we love it when he takes jabs True. at people. We're giving exactly. him the confidence to make meaner and meaner content mm -hmm. and somehow think and that more it's creative, okay too. or professional. Yeah. It's also a reflection on the type of place the internet is. He's realized that negativity sells on the internet. Mm -hmm. If you have a way to expose something ugly about someone, mm -hmm. it's going to get more views than if you say how lovely someone is. Yeah. And I think his content has gotten more critical over time because we 
the internet are giving the impression it's what we want. So oh, that's just something to keep in mind. Because when we point the finger, there's one pointed right back at us. Right. Please remember also, I'm not making this video to cancel him. In many ways, I still value his content, and I think he has the potential to redeem himself. But it's going to take looking at his own content with the same critical lens. And honestly, the ethics code, which states very clearly that we should minimize harm, which in my opinion includes not publicly denigrating people's reputation, especially people who have stated that they have mental illness and are survivors of abuse. Please mm -hmm. let me know what you think about this. Put your comments down below. Girl, also, don't forget eight. to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll eight. see you soon. Girl. Oh, she crushed that. She said, I'll oh, hold up a second. Let me just academically drag for one minute. <laughs> hold on. Wait. <laughs> hold up. Let me like and subscribe because sit. the way you really just opened my eyes, I'm like, ooh, you are not lying. But at the same time, like, this is why I feel like the beginning of someone's channel is so prominent. Like, it, it's, I feel like it's the part of a YouTube channel that every viewer should take the time to go find out what it was like or what it was, you know what I mean? Because I feel like that's when you really know what was the channel supposed to be in the beginning or how was this person, you know, what? why did this person create their channel? You know, I love hearing the stories of why people created their channel or what made them actually like care to be consistent. It's hard to rebrand, so just think of that before going into being the next soda reviewer. <laughs> Guilty pleasure, I love watching smaller YouTubers before they blow up. It's just, I love it. Because at the end of the day, everyone gets put into the box of you're here for money. So if you're here for money and you're here for ad revenue and you're here to, you know, get as many views or pop off or get 100k subscribers or whatever have you, whatever it is that you're here to do, like, what was it at first when you first got on here? So for example, mine was mental health, right? Like that's all I really wanted to talk about. That's all I really wanted to, to do was just kind of like share my story and build a tribe of people who understood where I was coming from because I didn't have anybody to really rely on and talk to about it. That was why I wanted to start my channel. I have no idea why Dr. Grande started his channel. I don't know, but that is the question that we need to ask ourselves. You know what I mean? It's the same with um Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, remember, everybody was like, oh my God, Dr. Mike, he's like the only doctor I trust, like during COVID and everything. And then when they found out that he went like to a party, he didn't have a mask on and he was just like out, like not giving any Fs about. Remember that? Remember that? And then everyone was like, oh my God, Dr. Mike. And then it just kind of died down and then people still were like supporting him. At the end of the day, what is this person on YouTube for? What? What was their core reasoning? Because any doctor can hop on here and create a channel, have their credentials, speak, spin it uniquely, and gain traction and followers because they're coming in with a educational standpoint, an academic package, which is favored in all walks of life. Obviously, you are going to want to watch somebody who is more educated than you or can educate you from time to time, right? So it's so interesting how she has conveyed this video because honestly, she's not wrong, but also who's really to blame? For me, I see it as society. It doesn't matter who or what you are right now as you watch this video. If your daughter, son, best friend, who else can I say, mom, anybody called you that you love and that you're close to and they said, oh my God, I'm, I'm marrying a doctor. I'm gonna be Mrs. Dr. Toomba. Whatever the last name is, everyone is like, oh my God. Yeah, my friend married a doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's the same with lawyers, right? So again, whose fault is that? Society? Your parents, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, you want, you know, you're going to want to be a doctor. You're going to be a doctor. Yeah, you're so smart. Is it your parents' fault? Where do these biases come from? You know what I'm saying? Because let's be honest, if Dr. Todd Grande was doing what he was doing right now and he was a black woman, he would have more hate than he would love. You know that. I know that. If you don't know that, let me know and then we can talk about it down in the comment section. Because honestly, let's be real, that's how it would be, unfortunately. Anyways, I don't want to get into a race debate. I love you guys so much. Let me know what y'all thought about this video. Let me know what y'all thought about Dr. Todd Grande. Because obviously, like, I haven't reacted to his videos in 
quite some time so it would be interesting to even watch his content now especially with this perception in my noggin but yeah let me know what you think let me know if you are still subscribed to him and if you still watch his content and i will see y'all all in my next video